Just three rounds remain in the season. Three classic tracks to visit and a champion to be crowned. The Rhine Valley near the town of Hockenheim is our location today. A sprint round at the Hockenheim ring. A feisty race for victory just a couple of weeks ago at Suzuka. Saw a last lap move uh, for the race victory. Are we going to see the same thing today? Two races ahead of us, 25 minutes of race and a wide open race circuit ready for the high intensity of the 11th round of the Cupra Sim Racing Series 2020. As always, it's myself, Lewis McLeod, alongside me, Robert Wiesemuller. And Rob, last round we saw that crazy race. Uh, what a feisty end. And uh, well, I think we're going to be moving into just three rounds to go in the season with quite a lot of pressure. Hello, everyone. Hey, Lewis. Yes, indeed, last round, very spectacular round. And um, if we're taking a look at the entry list here, you can already see a couple of drivers missing after the last round. And Spunky, one of them, having a qualifying ban and opting not to start the race. So that was certainly a lot of action and uh, a lot of implications for the championship as well. And uh, Tockenheim, it's a track that always delivers with good racing, with close racing. We've seen it last season. And uh, I think this race won't disappoint either. No, Banky, of course, uh, in the wars a little bit last round, out, got a bit too aggressive and got himself into a, a few dodgy situations. Of course, ended the race uh, taking the win, but not before making a, a bit of an aggressive move on the final lap, which is uh, what effectively got him that qualifying ban. I think it's fine for him to just take a, a, a sit back and think, right, OK, I'll come back next round. There's still two rounds to go in the championship. Of course, when we go to Spa and Macau to end the season here at Hockenheim, though, the focus on drivers like Jack Keithley, uh, Adam Pinchez, Florian Hasse topping the pre-qualifier coming into this, Rob. Yeah, Florian Hassel, one of the big favorites here. But before we really get into this round, let's actually see some moving pictures of what happened last time in Suzuka. I think you've prepared something for us there, Lewis. Welcome to Highlights for the 10th round of the Keeper Sim Racing Series from Suzuka. It was Gergo Baudi on pole position ahead of Moritz Lerner and Bent Banke. And on the run down towards turn one, it was Moritz Lerner who would have the best launch. On the inside and heavy on the brakes, he'd open the door as well for Bent Banke to sneak through. Over the first apex, he goes taking an awful lot of curb, but Bent Banke, once it got to the second one, was ahead of Gergo Baudi. Our guest car today was Yaroslav Honzik, who would start making his way up the order as Shanto and Attila Dina came together at the final chicane, opening him up for a couple of positions. Back towards the front of the field, and Benz Banky was applying pressure to Moritz Lerner. Lerner would run wide at T1, opening the door for Banky, who would fire it through and gather the lead at the second apex. Moritz Lerner wasn't waiting around, though. He would be firing some shots back towards Benz Banky. Gogo Valdi, a bit of a mistake there, almost opened the door for him to drop off the podium. David Noj fired one down the inside at Spoon Corner on Florian Haas, so it wouldn't work out by the time they got to 130R, and with this battling, the top five would be pulling away. Later on the next lap, and Florian Haas would make a mistake over the chicane, giving him a slowdown penalty, costing the position to David Noj, but Noj, sensing the top five were clearing off, would come down the pit lane straight away. Jack Keithley would sense an opportunity to grab a podium position as he would dive down the inside of Gogo Baudi and grab third at the hairpin. On board with Pinches, he would watch second, third and fourth come into the pit lane as Moritz Lerner would lead Jack Keithley and Gogo Baudi. David Nige did make up a bit of time as he would close up towards the three that had already pitted. Then at the end of that lap, Benz Banky would come down pit lane and drag Adam Pinches with him, but was it too late on board with Moritz Lerner? You can see there Pinches and then Banky coming out of pit lane. Lerner to the lead of the race. And Banky would shuffle out with David Noz just a little bit further down the order. There'd be contact between Banky and Keithley as we'd run into the S's section and a bit of a pinch between the lot as David Noz wasn't able to get through. Banky would waste no time trying to make a move on Jack Keithley, but Keithley wasn't a fan of a dive bomb from that far back. Adam Pinches, in his attempt through the pit lane, received a drive through penalty, would drop him outside of the top seven battle that he was a part of. Benz Banky then would really fire it down the inside of Keithley. There'd be contact between the two as they were both pinched and then across the chicane they go would get a slow down penalty jack keithley would take his straight away and then would drop the position to david nage benz banky would wait a while he would then slow down outside of the s's section at dunlop and david nage sensed his opportunity that this was a time that he could grab the position from banky but because banky had waited so long he then had to drop behind keithley and florian harser bringing harser right back into the mix it wouldn't take long, though, for him to try something different as uh, Jack Keithley would get a little bit balked by David Noj. We'd be four wide off of the hairpin and going from sixth to third. 
Benz Banky gains all three places in one corner. Battle for the race lead. Gergo Baudi, Moritz Lerner, Baudi down the inside of turn two, would try and make his way up to the race lead. Then this excellent display between the two of them. Going through the S's section, this would cost them an awful lot of time, but my goodness, did it look good as they would fly their way through respect between the two of them. Gergo Baldi had the inside through the exit of the S's section, the outside for Dunlop, and would take the race lead. After this, he'd maybe struggle a little bit with tyres and would end up slowing Moritz Lerner down towards the pack behind, and Benz Banky was closing in. Moritz Lerner sensed that, and he would fire it down the inside of Turn 1, desperate to take the lead as early as possible, and he would do so to the lead of the race goes Moritz Lerner. Final lap of the race, though, the three of them would come together at turn one it would open the door a little bit for Banky to try and force his way through and he would do so pushing Moritz Lerner off on the exit curb of turn two but Benz Banky would really force his way alongside through the S's section wouldn't give the same level of space that Gogo Baudi did earlier in the race just behind this into turn one there'd be contact between Noj and Keithley both of them into the gravel trap and heavily into the wall Jack Keithley would retire on the spot and David Noj would keep going to the checkered flag at the front of the field though Benz Banky takes his second race victory of the season from Moritz Lerner and Gogo Baudi. Thanks a lot Lewis. And here we are then last 30 seconds of the practice session on the Hockenheim ring and we can see our guest driver Sebastian Stahl back in the championship here. Actually see yeah. if we can get a camera from him as well. There we go. We've seen him a couple of times in the in the Keep for Sim Racing series. Of course, also did the VIP uh, event uh, a good few months ago now. Uh, seems to be enjoying his time in sim racing. Of course, the stepbrother of uh, the Schumachers and uh, a bit of a racer himself. So it's uh, a, a pleasure to have him in the Keep for Sim Racing series as we approach our finale at a rapid pace. And, and with that, the championship is also Coming down, uh, coming down a little bit for, for the likes of David Nodge, who's been so consistent this season, Rob. Yes, here we can see the championship standings. Drop scores are applied, and the drop scores actually mean that David Nodge can win the championship today. Oh, it's Everything Lerner. goes yeah. towards his, his favour, yeah. Yes, well, it's Lerner, the only other driver who can win the championship, because Monkey is not racing. And he, David Nodge needs to score 206 points and 40 points more than Moritz Löhner, and that would mean the championship goes into his favor already here in Hockenheim. You can also see top 10 is, uh, gives the cash prize. Ben Supanek, driver in 10th place, he's absent. He's driving in server 2, he only qualified for server 2. That means for Barner and for Antonov and Jarschel, who both returns, has a great chance, great opportunity to, uh, to sneak into the top 10 and maybe get some prize money in the end. Also with Barna, you can see on there, he's changed team. He brought this up to me before the round. He's moved from virtual drivers by TX3 over to AAA. And with that, of course, you know, subs and, and the Cooperstown Race Series will fix themselves. So it's fine. But having the assistance of an experienced race winning driver like Adam Pinches, just going to help. And that's who he's following in this session right now as well. I think that sort of like that push from a teammate the likes of Adam Pinches is just going to help him that little bit extra. That maybe that little one or two percent that he might just need to get it over the line inside the top ten. Another driver who found this little bit extra is this man here, Florian Hasse. He was the fastest driver in pre-qualifying for the very first time this season. And on his home circuit, perhaps he can finally take the victory because he hasn't won a race yet this season. No, we, uh, I mean, he, until last year, hadn't won a race in, in race room. It took him an awfully long time. Very consistent, always towards the front of a championship or, you know, top five podium of a race. But getting that win took him a long time. Once he did win, he took quite a few. But getting that one win was quite hard. Now that he's topped to pre-qualify for this, which is quite hard to do in the Cooper Sim Racing Series. He's been dominated by one person uh, who's not here today, Ben Spanky, uh, the pre-qualifiers. Having that will just give that boost of confidence into the round, which I think someone like Florian Haas is a, is a confident driver. He's very sensitive to confidence, and I think that will really help him this round at, in Germany. Yes, another team that's very, very happy to be here in this round in Germany, and just something I wanted to share, that's the Ballas Racing Team. So for example, Sylvester Schoboschlei, one of their drivers, 
And they they shared something fun on social media that I will just bring up here. They had actually a, a truck. They took a truck around the track that they painted in their team colors and uh, drove to the Hockenheim Wings. So check out the video on their Facebook page. As you see these teams here getting into the series, taking it seriously and having a bit of fun as well. You've got to have a bit of fun. You've got to take you've got to take the serious with a bit of uh, calm enjoyment. If you're serious all the time, it, it, it can really take a, take take its toll. And so it's nice to see some teams having a bit of fun, especially for the likes of Ballas who have how many was it you said it was eleven drivers across all uh, all divisions. They're a, a well oiled machine in the Keeper Sim Racing series. I think thirteen even. Thirteen, my goodness. Jack Keith, the first driver to set a lap time here. We'll see what it be. He's got a bit of a, a tall order to, to qualify and pull. That said, when it comes to his record around this circuit, he's a pretty strong driver himself. We'll see what he does towards the line. Obviously going to go on to provisional pole, but for how long? 47-0-4-0. Decent time. And Chihan uh, is in second place. There goes Florian Haas for a tenth off at the moment, but still that's a bit of a bigger margin than what we would have expected. I think probably like a high 46 is where we're, if, if anyone gets to that sort of level, is where we're really expecting things to go. Here comes championship leader David Noz. What's he going to do across the line? Only second, 8,000 behind Jack Keefley. Gianmarco Feducci also got up to fourth place ahead of Emery Chihan. Yeah, good time from Keefe then. And you can see only 15 drivers are in the classification because it's very hard to get a lap time in that Harkenheim ring due to the track limits in the first corner. Yeah, notable drivers that haven't set a time yet. Tim Yarshaw is down in 18th place. 21st place, Adam Pinches. 22nd place, Moritz Lerner. Juan Manuel Gomez, Martin Barner. All haven't set a time yet. Remember back to uh, to Dubai when Moritz Lerner really, really struggled in qualifying with track limits. Uh, for I think for the, the first session, uh, only really got a time at the end. Qualified 19th place in the first session. In the second one qualified a little bit better at night. But remember, that second qualifying session is a shorter session. It is just five minutes long. It is a hard session to get a lap in. You need to carry confidence into it and belief that you can keep within the track limits. Yeah, and you can see the gaps are pretty big here. Keithy's time is very good, 47-0. But uh, you can see Frigotto almost six tenths off in the top ten. So yeah. bigger gaps than usual. Bigger gaps than we would normally expect in the Keep Sim Racing Series. Emery Chihan's on an all right time ahead of this. We see Neg come towards the line. Emery Chihan doesn't improve. Uh, I always found the hardest corner at Hockenheim was the second to last and final corner. It was always the bit where I'd mess up because it's such a tricky corner, like section to get right. Because it's the, the penultimate corner you, requires so much commitment on the apex, but it's so easy to run wide. Ask Nico Hulkenberg, he found that one out <laughs> in, the, in the way. <laughs> yes, it's, it looks like an easy track in some ways, but it isn't an easy track when you want to go to the limit. No. And it's also one of the tracks where you can pass the best. So I think we will see some really interesting races. Yeah, down into the hairpin. Obviously, uh, we, we've seen <laughs> any a move uh, in, the, in the past. Um, three, four wide we've seen going down into there. Whether we'll see that today, I'm sure we're definitely going to see a lot of overtaking. We see uh, Sokovikov to the line, goes to 15th place. Not a great final sector, but uh, a decent lap altogether. And up to 15th, he goes ahead of uh, Torelli. Double notch, purple. Once again in the Mira train. Yeah. Easy follow now. Gogo Bowley gets out of the way. He's uh, dragged along Zoltan City. And uh, the car boat directly behind that, Quentin Ponto, deciding that he is, he wants a little bit of that uh, that slipstream from Mirror Esports. Why not? It's a good train to be a part of. <laughs> Certainly find a bit of time sat in there. Absolutely. I think Moritz said to me that it's usually his strategy not to draft with his teammate Jack Keithley, but try to find the Mirror train. Yeah. Ooh, very wide. Is that still legal? Yes. Second sector time coming up, and it's a good Very second quick. sector. Considering his first sector as well was purple to the tune of nearly a tenth on Jack Keithley, uh, and he's, and he's he lost time in the final sector, so this is where he has the time to gain. He's already found it over the slab. This could be a very good lap. 
from uh, from David Nodge. Zoltan Suti directly behind as well is also doing PBs, and you can tell that by how close he's following. It's not purple, though, for, for Suti. Very wide out of the penultimate corner on the run through the final to the line. This could be pole for David Nodge, and it certainly is. Oh, there we go. 46, 9, 2, 3 by a tenth oh. of a second. That is an incredible time. On a nice lap time from David Notch. Looking at Kirill Antonov right now, but trying to find Moritz Lerner. Still he's last. A time. Still not. Oh, Moritz Lerner. So close. Very much a contender for the championship earlier in the season. He took a few race wins but everything just started to fall apart a few rounds ago. Last round actually looked almost, you know, back on form, was battling for the race victory. But the, the two rounds prior, I think like we were saying this before, is that the two drop scores that you get in the season, he had taken effectively the, the two rounds prior to Suzuka. That showed how much he dropped off from Nodge. Nodge is just constantly race victories. Oh, I've not taken a victory, I'm on the podium. Last round, he had an incident uh, on the last lap of the race. Still came to the checkered flag and still scored at least some points from uh, from his efforts you know, for the just-in-case. Moritz Lerner to the line then. There should be a time at least on the board. Goes to ninth, at least gets himself inside the top ten. And Antonov, meanwhile, up to P3, just ahead of him. So the Russian driver here with a very strong return to the championship. But stronger than Tim Jarschel, who also came back. It's only in P13. Yeah, Yarshall's struggling a lot more than his teammate, who's currently in fifth place. 47-165 for Florin Haase. Uh, maybe uh, disappointing is the wrong word in that sense. Uh, I would have expected Haase to be a little bit higher than that, considering his pre-qualifying record. But he's got the pace for the race, and we know what he's like as a racer. He's very consistent when it comes to racing. We've got on our screen uh, Sebastian Stoll, who's got a little bit of slipstream as well from Sokovikov directly ahead. Yeah, not too far behind Barna, a little bit further back than he was in Brands Hatch. But uh, could be in a position here to challenge for some places in the race. I've not even realized. P23, P24. Bold in Barna. Yes, a bit out of position there. Very much so. I think uh, Boldy sacrificed most of his lap, though, to give his teammates. That's how I would assume it anyway, of course, was uh, right towards the front last round, battling for the race victory with Moritz Lerner. Maybe his tyres went off. Actually, I don't know what happened when he was battling with Moritz Lerner, because he was very slow for about five or six laps whilst everyone caught up. And then once everyone caught up, he was like, oh, yeah, no, actually, my tyres are fine, didn't I? Yeah, we suspected maybe some tactics from Bardi mm -hmm. there, trying to bring the field together. There were a lot of incident reports in the last race, 28 reports total. My goodness. Mr. Mike Bell was a busy boy. Yeah, he was indeed, and uh, <laughs> quite a few penalties given, but yeah, Bunky the one who lost out the most, Keith K. Notch also with the penalty. Aldi and Lerner both unhappy with each other, but both not really driving so unfair in the race, to be honest. Oof! That was Fiducci into the back of, uh, of Attila Dina in the qualifying. Not ideal, and certainly not into uh, the hairpin. So oh, I think he might have lost a little bit of time from that. Gogo Baudi, by the way, is improving in the uh, second sector. Uh, and Attila Dina bails from that lap. He's got en enough time for one. Yeah, just about. Uh, here is Gogo Baudi, who's uh, improving the first sector, improving a little bit in the uh, second sector as well. Should move him up the order towards the top 10 as long as he nails this final sector. But as much as things were quite open earlier in the session, naturally, as things progress, it's becoming a bit more closed off. And I think he'll only just about get within the top 10 if this final sector is put together well. Towards the line, goes to 11th place, just outside the top 10, lower than we'd expect Gogo Baldi to be. Well, certainly lower, still behind Moritz Lerner as well. And he won't get another timing either. Oh, no, he's staying in the pit lane. Let's see with Lerner. Lerner's on a good lap. And he needs to be on a good lap because there's points in qualifying already. 20 points for pole and only two points for P9. So that means from this, uh, from these 40 points that, that uh, Notch has to gain, he's already gained 18 in the qualifying, in the first qualifying of the day. Yeah, it is looking very good for, for Notch in this championship. The maybe come 
uh, a couple of days early. And uh, when you consider the grand scheme of things in the championship, we'll see what Lerner could do. Barna was the car behind, not on a lap time. Drops behind Emery Chihan, who was the red and black car just behind that. Not a good second sector from Moritz Lerner. I think it's all going to come down towards this final lap for him, which he is about to start yeah. with uh, two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Took a line which compromised his final sector, but gave him a very good run for this lap. Oh, very wide, very close. As much as there's been some work done on uh, on Hoffenheim uh, recently, it's why we were supposed to run it originally earlier in the season. It was replaced with Brands. We moved Hoffenheim towards the end of the season um, whilst work was being done on the circuit. And through all of that, uh, one thing that has not changed is how easy it is to run wide at T1 and pick up a tractor. Yes. I think it even got a bit harder. Yeah. Because there's no black area where you can't really see the, the line where the track limits end. Oh, it's Lerner. No slipstream either. And it just shows, you know, it just shows the teamwork from Mira again. Aldi is drafting notch on the lap, and that's the reason why he's on pole. Ooh, a uh, good sector's coming in from Zoltan City. Uh, I've just noticed he's looking pretty good. Uh, at the moment, coming into uh, Sachs Curve, looking pretty strong. At the moment, Naj has finished his session. Basically, that's done. Same with Keithley. Kirill Antonov is in the pit lane in third place and sitting there comfortably. These sectors are looking pretty good, Rob, for uh, Zoltan City to maybe move onto the front row of the grid and make it a mirror esports 1 2 in quality. Be a massive step in the right direction. It's not improving. Ooh, not good. Not really good enough uh, final sector. And uh, Florian Harsen moved up to third position. That he was just behind. Moves to third uh, on the exact same time as Jack Keithley. Moritz Lerner towards the line. P7. Goes to seventh. A fair improvement. That's four points instead of two. Yeah. And of course, a better chance in the race. at least some movement forwards. Gianmarco Fiducci, there we go, Lerner moves backwards. Gianmarco Fiducci moves to fifth place, gets himself inside the top five. The last person to qualify is Attila Dina, who moves to 14th. The session is done, and we'll see what happens in race one. First race then about to start, Jack Keithley on the front row alongside our championship leader and pole sitter, David Noj. Is he going to wrap up the championship here today at the Hockenheim ring? Just three rounds to go in the championship, five races, two today, and then three following this before we've wrapped up the 2020 Cooper Sim Racing Series. Who's going to take victory in the first race of the evening? David Nogent pole, Jack Keithley, Florian Hasser, and Kirill Antonov on the front couple of rows and a very short run towards the first corner. Naturally, a good launch. I think Florian Hasser, though, is just going to get squeezed off by Jack Keithley nearly. There was definite contact, and I think Jack Keithley uh, did not really get a particularly good launch, and Florian Hasser was all up in his business, and I think he still is on the run towards the second corner, as Jack Keithley, I think, is about to be demoted in position of, of the first couple of corners, and Florian Hasser goes to second and sets his sights on a victory. Jack Keithley down to third. Kirill Antonov all a part of that, and M uh, Zoltan City directly behind. Good and what start. a start. What a start from David Notch. He's really, he's really trying to win the championship here today. Big gap already and has has to defend. Oh, so smart from Notch. Pulls it over to the, what is his left-hand side of the road and lets them all battle in the background. Kirill Antonov left three wide as Antonov's trying to go all the way around. Jack Keithley dives down the inside. Busts uh, Florian Harser out of the way. Let's open the door for Kirill Antonov as well to take the position. He's got the slipstream from Keithley as we run through the very fast right-hander. David Nosh is running away. He's half a second clear already. Kirill Antonov's trying to get another couple of positions as he's trying to go for second, almost around the outside, nearly open the door for Florian Harser. Jack Keithley back to second place. 
But David Nosh, he's loving this. That was very smart on the run into the hairpin. Broke the slipstream, left the door open, and let them all race behind. And he is running away. Good start from Luna, though, as well, up to P6. Ooh, Catching up a contact. bit. Fiducci almost lost it there. Yeah, big contact in the background there between Juan Manuel Gomez and uh, Gianmarco Fiducci just behind. And I think there was nearly a, a fairly large incident there into the Saks curve. But nevertheless, like you say, Moritz Lerner moving his way forward. Uh, eight to six. That's decent progress up the order. And exactly what he needs to do. He's very much a part of the slipstream train for the race lead. First lap completed and uh, David Nodge leading the way. We look back down the order at Sebastian Stahl, who's gained a few positions. Vitfer, Gunai and uh, Sokovikov way down the order. Sokovikov is actually Slow the for first Keithley. one for the race. Oh, yeah, very much so. First one of the race and drops down to fourth. That's exactly what David Nodge wants. And this really brings Moritz Lerner into the mix as well for a potential podium here. I think Moritz Lerner's focus today is on delaying the crowning of David Nagy and moving up the order in this race is going to be absolutely crucial for it. Dives to the inside, then back to the outside. Committed on the brakes, heavy to it. Draws alongside his teammate. Going to try and go all the way around the outside of uh, Zoltan Siuti. Going to get a great drive up the corner, but it's not really going to work uh, straight off the corner. But with the slipstream from his teammate, with the excellent drive off of it, Moritz Lerner is gaining the place and up to fifth he goes. How much is Jack Keithy going to fight him at this point? Whoa, there's a bit of contact between the two of them. Uh, we've seen that a few times this season. Uh, those two do race quite hard with each other. Not too bad though, they're all right. We're all surviving. Fair play from Sultan Suti in this situation. Very Left a lot of room for Moritz Lerner and just let him go, go through in the end. But great move from Lerner as well, using the slipstream there. And at the front of the field, Antonov has closed the gap. Yeah. I mean, for, for Davin, I, think, I, I thought he was going to absolutely clear off, but Kirill Antonov has a very different thing to say about that on his return to the Keeper Sim Racing Series. He's focusing on uh, potential race victory very wide through the penultimate corner is David Noj. Got to be careful. It's very easy. If you're doing that at corners like T1, it's very, very easy to pick up that track cut to, to get yourself a slowdown penalty. So on they go. Anyone else going to get one this lap? Oh, Moritz Lerner is very wide. Moritz Lerner was very, very wide behind this. I think he's all right. Whoa, hold your breath. Such a hard corner, especially when you're directly behind someone. You can't really spot the apex very well. It's all a bit of a guessing game. If you turn in too early, you hit the curb, you go wide. If you turn in too late, you go wide. It's very hard. Threading the eye of the needle 120 mile an hour. <laughs> it's not an easy feat. And Antonov, he was backing out there. Didn't want to go for a move. Better for surprise. Let's see if Fiducci goes for a move. Yes, he does indeed. Yes, he does. Uh, it's oh, Luna is a slowdown. Oh, Luna did get the slowdown. What? Did he get that from turn two? He must, have, he must have gotten it in turn one, I think. Why did he leave it so late? Oh, he's going to lose another position here. As, uh, oh, there's more. There's more. Oh, it's, it's horrible for Moritz Lerner, an absolute disaster. Moves down to 13th place. That is an absolute disaster for Moritz Lerner. Just get a report in 1.7 seconds slowdown. Oh, that is hard as getting it. Galakov is diving well. in there. That was a massive dive from Alexander Galakov. And uh, there's another position just to add to Moritz Lerner's troubles. He's got uh, Gustavo Fregate behind who I think, you know, should be, it might be a little bit more patient. Oh, as Moritz Lerner is trying to get it done into the final corner, not exactly a perfect overtaken opportunity. And a bit of a demise there from the Williams Esports driver down to 14th place. Oh, he's, got a, he's gonna get another oh, slowdown for no. this line. Yeah. And there we go, he's going, to, he's going to lose the position anyway to uh, Gustavo Fregato. Things just not working out. We refocus up towards the front of the field and Florin Harsa has got by Kirill Antonov, as has Jack Keithley. What's happened to Antonov? I wonder if he's received a bit of a slowdown penalty. He's right on the back of David Nodge, who now has nearly a two-second lead 
Florian Haaser all the way over to the right hand side of the circuit, picking up the white line all the way round, holding a very, very defensive line. And I think Jack Keith's going to try and go around the outside. Gianmarco Peducci and Kirill Antonov in the background as well. Jack Keith going for the undercut. Gianmarco Peducci is blocked by Kirill Antonov, but this time it is going to go the way of Peducci and Zoltan Suti with Dergo Baudi as well. And Juan Gomez directly behind this. Everyone's battling into that hairpin. We know it's a race location, Rob. Is Jack Keithley feeling it? No, he's not. Thank you. That, was, that would have been quite a dive. Oh, they are behind. They are behind. That is Gergo Baudi and uh, Juan Manuel Gomez with Adam Pinchez directly behind. All of the uh, the black cars, fantastic. Very confusing now. As uh, you've got uh, Gomez and Pinchez behind. Pinchez moving his way up the order. He didn't qualify very well, but he's moving up quite quickly, Rob. He is moving up quite quickly indeed, but here you can also see the gap that uh, David Notch has now. Antonov maybe taking a bit too much risk in the first corner as well. Just put that on your, your screen on the uh, left-hand side going into it. The battle between Barner and Tim Yash who got very feisty into, uh, into the sex curve. And uh, there, was, there was a fair amount of contact. Barner holds on to 10th place and Tim Yash is not able to move up at the moment. But he's looking pretty aggressive, of course. Tim Yash fresh off. Oh, it's like, oh, I didn't think it might be as Barner's down the side of Adam Pinchez at the first corner. You don't see that move very often. I don't know if Pinchez had a slowdown or just a terrible run out of the final corner, but the door was left wide open for a move down the inside and Martin Barner thought best of it. It's down the inside of turn two and Tim Yarshall going around the outside and dragging Emery Cheehan with him. They all stay in position, at least for now, but we've got the hairpin coming up, so who knows what's about to happen. Checking with Hassan and Keithley first for the hairpin. Hassan has to defend again. Everything working out for David Notch at the oh, moment. Oh, Keithley! Jack totally misjudged it. Oh, that's not good. Absolutely miscued by Jack Keithley. And it's dropped them both way down the order. Getting straight back onto the racing line as well. As is uh, Florian Haaser, who's getting pushed off by Juan Manuel Gomez, trying to rejoin the side of the car. That was not good. That was a total misjudgment from Keithley, who's now getting a slowdown penalty for his troubles getting contact there with uh, Martin Barner as well. Oh, you don't like to see that, Rob. Very similar in, in some scenarios. There's uh, the slowdown penalty, I think, for Florian Haaser as well. Very similar to what happened between himself and David Nodge just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, just too much aggression here in this race. We know the season is almost over, but you still need these cars for two more rounds. Yeah, we know uh, Keith Lee can be a little bit aggressive at times. Uh, I think that one was just uh, one that maybe fell a little bit too far, a little uh, little bit out of reach. And it's cost Florian Haaser a lot. He's still going for it, though, towards the uh, front end of the field. Gianmarco Peducci now up to second place. Stunning try from Gianmarco Peducci thus far. Remember how emotional he was at Dubai when he missed out on the chance of a podium and even a potential race victory. It Cost. absolutely seemed to destroy him in the race. Because of a slowdown penalty. Yeah. Oh, there's contact behind between Keithley and Barner as uh, Barner's going around the outside. This is getting very feisty <laughs> up and down the order as Barner's got that spot on Jack Keithley. And Keithley is sitting on quite a few strikes already. I think he needs to watch out, especially because he's also competing in other championships in the race room. He's still going for the same move. He's going for the same move as he did on Haaser. He's now down the inside. Adam Pinchez is going all the way around the outside of uh, Martin Barner, his new teammate. Jack Keithley down the inside, forces his way through. Martin Barner, I think, might just be able to hang on just behind Jack Keithley. Behind this, we've got uh, Adam Pinchez and Tim Yarshall going side by side. Florian Haaser has been deposed to the back of the pack, although battling it out with every G hand desperate not to drop all the way back. Adam Pinchez down the inside, makes contact with his teammate and pushes Jack Keithley wide. Off you go. Ex teammate for Adam Pinchez packing now back with his teammate Marx Lerner who's suddenly just coming out of nowhere at Battling Wars. This is insane Rob. Crazy racing here at the Hockenheim Wing certainly didn't disappoint but the stewards must be wondering if these uh, 28 reports of the last race and these penalties for the drivers oh, haven't had any effect. Some drivers a bit over the line here and at the front of the field they must be laughing. Do you think Ben's Banky's watching this thinking, oh, I'm kind of glad I'm not here. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll take sitting this round out. He would have had to start from the back of, uh, of the races, both of them, with the qualifying ban that he received. 
And at the moment, it seems like uh, he's all right to have missed out there. Sebastian Stahl going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with uh, Sinan Gunite at the back of the field. And, uh, you know, he's getting his elbows out. Like to see it. As long as he's having fun. Yeah, Gunite got past him. And I think Sukovikov has retired. He has five laps down, so he's out. Out of the yes. race. I think on the first lap of the race, he went. No, I don't know what for, but Sokol Vico there first time. He's only retired at NASCAR. Yes, Jihan, who took his first victory in, on race room in the DTM League. And he's right in the middle of this battle. Lerner now. Oof, there's so many. It's, it's hard to call. There goes Emry. So Emry Jihan's gained on Tim, uh, Tim Yasha. Florin Haas is trying to get by uh, Yasha as well. We've got behind this Jack Keefley and Moritz Lerner as well. And uh, it is quite a battle pack. It's about the only way that you can describe it. It is feisty, and in some ways that's good, and others not so much. I like you say. I think the stewards are going to be very busy after this one. Unfortunately, as now back down the inside, Jack Keefley goes on uh, on Florian Haas. I wasn't able to do so. We ride on board with Jack Keefley's teammate Moritz Lerner, who went down the order through his own mistake he ran wide at T1 didn't serve the slowdown penalty quick enough and then had to serve basically a monster penalty the longer you ignore it basically the harder it's going to get and uh, yeah he had to serve it quite big style dropped him way down the order and he kind of sat there wondering what could have been definitely could have been on the podium this race if that might happen I say definitely it's always easy to say that with pinch result isn't it? yeah but with so many mistakes happening I think you're right Antonov is in third, and he already made a mistake. He dropped back. Yeah. Zoltan Suti and uh, Gogo Baudi are very much part of that battle for the uh, for the podium as well. 2.2 seconds, as an FYI, is how far David Nagy is down the road on Gianmarco Verducci. He has absolutely checked out. You said he wanted to win the championship this round. You know, <laughs> what other way can you do it? Whole position, running away with it at the moment. Things are looking very, very good. We focus a little bit further down the order. Adam Pinches and uh, battling out with Martin Barner. Barner does not really fight that one too much, of course. Oh, but Pinches has run wide. Barner's going to pick it up down the inside. The two teammates now for AAA Esports battling out for seventh place. Nice little move from Martin Barner. Yeah, good move. And meanwhile, Antonov has lost his podium place. Dalton City up to third. Realistically, at the moment, if Gogo Baldi, Zoltan City get on it a little bit, catch up with Gianmarco Fiducci, get by. Mirror Esports 1, 2, 3. Very much a possibility at the moment with just 11 minutes to go in uh, in the first race here at Hockenheim. I'm sure uh, Kirill Antonov and Gianmarco Fiducci and uh, Juan Manuel Gomez will have something to say about that. Big points here for Gomez and especially for Antonov in the fight for the top 10. Yeah. We have reports that Luna got another slowdown. He's still hanging on to 13th place. Unless he hasn't served it yet. That's the, uh, that is the key thing. He's got a second and a bit back to Galakov, so he's got time to serve it. We look back from Zoltan Ciuti. Uh, a second and a bit ahead of this, Gianmarco Peducci is quite clear at the moment. As Shuti is defending a little bit from the young Russian. Slipstream fest all the way around the Parabolica down to the hairpin. And uh, Gianmarco Peducci is also close. Three tenths on uh, David Nice that lap. So with 10 minutes to go, I'm sure he's, he's thinking, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe today's the day. We'll have to wait and see. Background. Oh, Gogo Baldi's very hot on the brakes of the hairpin. Way too hot. And away he goes. Back down to sixth place and way off. Oh, and the Keithley there in the background driving into the side of Yasu. <laughs> There's someone you don't want to be driving into the side of at the moment. Tim Yasu will be one of those. These two have been in the Norton Books for Stewards a few times. Oh, that's been a kind of cross from Tim Yasu or Moritz Lerner. Now going around the outside of his teammate. Oh, that could be very nice into the arena section. Nicely done. Hooked it up on the apex. That was very pretty. Great move, but Keithley can come back when we come to the motorhome. He's still on the inside. Lerner holds firm on the outside. Is he going to run too far wide? No, he's not. Intersects curve. Nicely done. 12th 
place for Moritz Lerner. Florian Haaser, Tim Yarshall, Moritz Lerner, Jack Keithley battling to get inside the top 10. Yeah, I've made a little preparation here so I can calculate who wins the championship, but I haven't even written down the points below 10th. So let's see if Lerner gets back prepared. into the top 10. <laughs> I have not prepared for that eventuality. We see Kirill Antonov still on the back of uh, Zoltan Suti, so he's still very much pacey enough to try and get a, uh, get onto it. Torelli getting a drive-through penalty for uh, ignoring slowdown. That'll cost you a bit of time. Yeah, only his second start here in Division 1. That's a mistake that can happen, of course, but it's something that he will probably learn from. Yeah. Well, a lot of time you only, you know, you, you have to make the mistake to learn from it. As uh, Antonov, not desperate to get by Zoltan Suti at the moment. We saw that earlier. He wasn't. He got to the back of David Noj and did instantly try and go for it, which I kind of feel like it shows a little bit of learning on Kirill Antonov's side. You know, he's learning a bit of patience, which is what I like to see. You know, you've got a young driver coming through the ranks and yeah. showing incredible speed. They, they need to learn sometimes as... We see this battle continue as Moritz Lerner's gotten up to 11th position. Oh, we've got to the corner a little bit, though, nearly opens the door. Florian Haaser moves up past Emery Chihan to ninth place. And there's Tim Yarshall, Moritz Lerner still going side by side. Lerner trying to get uh, past and hold past Tim Yarshall. Jack Keithley's now very much part of it. So Lerner up in position up to 11. Oh, there's been a change up at the front. Kirill Antonov's got up to third place on Zoltan City. Just caught that on my other screen. There was contact with the sax curve, which is what pushed that one out. And Gomez is caught up now. Very much so. Gergo Baldi is way off and like is not catching quick after that mistake into the hairpin. Who's grabbing that final seat on the podium? You kind of get the feeling that Gianmarco Padic is now a bit too far down the road unless he picks up a slowdown penalty, as he did uh, back in Dubai, which cost him a podium there. He ended up finishing sixth place in that race after that slowdown penalty. Which is a shame, because it could have been so good for him. Jack Keefley, oh, he's dropping further down. I wonder if he's got another slowdown penalty behind uh, Galakov and battling it out with Romanenko. He must have got another slowdown, or, or he just ran wide or something. Something yeah. happened to Jack Keefley. But he's really, really... I mean, we've seen it before from him, but still, this is not the, the normal Jack Keefley. P14 here, so many mistakes. Not a Keithley drive. It really isn't. Oh, <laughs> over overcooking the corner there was uh, going to Ponto, I think that was. Who was that? Oh, no, it was um, Chabashla, I think. Chabashla, yeah, yeah. Really over to there. Whilst uh, we're, ba we're battling it out. It's very easy to do. It was going to Ponto, Vitfer, and uh, Chabashla. There's the, uh, there's the note that you pointed out to me prior to the round that at the moment, things are looking very good for David Nunes. If he scores 206 points, uh, which includes from the races and qualifying, we'll go into that a little bit later. If he scores 206 points and at least 40 more than Moritz Lerner, then uh, the championship is his at the moment, scoring 100 points from this race. And it's 20 points, I believe it is, from qualifying. Yeah. So he's already got 120 of the 206 that he needs. Could be a big day for him. A driver coming into this championship we didn't think was was going to be contending. I thought we all you know, knew he could get a race win or two. We've seen pace out of him that, that shows as, as much that he could definitely get some race wins. But the consistency that he's shown so far this season has been very top level. Very, very top level. He was sixth last season his first race from victory there and there were a lot of drivers that are rated higher like Keithley for example probably like Yashul as well who's in the background going side by side with Romanenko David Notch has been so strong here just have to jump to pinches as he's making another attempt of passing Barna he's probably sat there thinking come on why don't we sign this guy Martin Barna Clinging on to seventh place, and through all of that, Florian Harter 
who uh, we know is quick at this venue, has caught up to the back of Adam Pinches. And now as Adam Pinches is leaving it down the inside into the arena, doesn't quite commit to it fully. Florian Haas is looking at a potential seventh place at the moment, which would be quite good for him, all things considered after the incident between himself and Jack Keefley. Give him a little bit of confidence into the next race, at least. And of course, the shortened qualifying session, just five minutes coming up after this race. Tim Yarshall down the order behind Fregato, ahead of Romanenko, so he's had an issue as well. He was 11th the last time we saw, or 12th the last time we saw him, now down to 15th place. That's definitely a slowdown. I think especially those drivers who maybe who maybe haven't done the most preparation are getting hit by the slowdowns here. This is something you can definitely practice if you do a couple of race runs, if you know exactly how your car behaves with worn tires. Oof, that's also a slowdown. And that's not a deserved one for Yashel there. Just got pushed a bit there. Position to Attiladina through that. Oh, he's going to try and hang firm around the outside, but with that looming over his head, I think it's going to really hold for very long. And uh, Attiladina looks set for a, a 16th place. A little bit lower than I'd expect Attiladina. It's a lot lower than we would have expected Tim Yarshul. Juan Manuel Gomez trying to get fourth place from Zoltan Suti. He just misses the apex into the hairpin. Oh, behind that, that was Emery Chihan down the inside of. Uh, Florian Haaser, contact on the apex, I think a little bit between the two teammates, AAA drivers directly ahead of it. Emery Chihan seems set to grab ninth place at the moment. On the inside through the fast kick will be the outside though into the arena. And Florian Haaser on the inside, heavy on the brakes. The outside line does tend to carry momentum because you've got the inside from the next corner, a little bit of contact between the two and Florian Haaser does actually hang on on the inside. That's a fighting here. To stay in ninth place could have been so much more, but at least there's a second race coming up afterwards. Maybe this will give him the drive to really uh, pound it out in race two and try and grab a podium, a victory, perhaps. We'll see what he can do. Heading on to the final lap of the race, David Noj out front, 1.9 seconds, about the same like time gap that is hovered at all race, around two seconds, 2.2, I think it got up to, and went down to about 1.8, hovered around that kind of area. Matched on pace by Gianmarco Fiducci, but maybe just a little bit too late, just that gap wasn't quite close enough. The battle between um, Gianmarco Fiducci, Kirill Antonov, Zoltan Suti, all that lot, was all very, very tense. Kirill Antonov has pulled away from uh, Zoltan Suti as well, you can see behind as we can see what Gianmarco Fiducci is feeling at the moment. It'll be very interesting to see what he's like after the race. If he does end up getting to the checker flag in the position he's currently in, I'm sure he'll be ecstatic about it. Still one more happen to go. Gomez wasn't really close enough, but Hasse is. And he gets the outside. He was given. He was. He was really thinking about the best way of approaching that. And unfortunately, Adam Pinches didn't really leave anything on the table. Weighed that up very nicely. Did the uh, Hungarian coming off the inside well? Didn't out outdo himself going into the arena section. Harser on the outside. We've seen him try this one a few times. He's going to go all the way around the outside of Adam Pinches and even the inside through the right hander. Is this one going to go the way of Florian Harser? Last lap of the race. Is he going to move up to eighth place? Could be a great move from him. Martin uh, Barnes trying to give the snip through to Adam Pinches. He's going to try and hold it around the outside with a very fast right hand. It does so, and that'll give him the inside of Sachs curve. And that might mean Emery Chihan's going to try and go through. He's fired down the inside, makes contact with Adam Pinches. They're still side by side. I think we've got to focus up a little bit further from this. It's coming through the final corner to take yet another victory and place one hand on the 2020 Cooper Sim Racing Series trophy. David Noj wins again. Gianmarco Fiducci second place in pretty happy with that. It's less animated than I was expecting. Kirill Antonov in third. And through all of that, oh, as they all cross the line, or in the panic, Martin Barner hangs on from Florian Haaser, who did get by Adam Pinches. Moritz Lerner also got by Emery Chihan and gets inside the top 10, so you can do your maths right. David Notch, what a big step towards the championship. Massive result for him here. What a massive result. Here we see confirmation. Fastest lap Fiducci. 
Antonov in P3 on the podium on his return to the championship. Nice result for him. Yeah, great drive for David Naj. Great drive for Gianmarco Peducci as well. And Kirill Antonov moving his way up the order. Curious to see what happens in the next race with the likes that were down the order, like Keith Lee and all that lot. But before that, I think we've got a little video to show you of some upcoming championship, which will uh, definitely pique your interests. The inaugural season then of the Cooper e-racing competition sign-ups and competition is open now go and get yourself qualified first round of the season suzuka is where the qualifications at go and get yourself on the grid rob what an incredible moment that is for uh for us as a brand and for cooper as well yes the brand new cooper e-racer it's a very spectacular car it may look similar to the tcr that we have here right now but it's completely different it's rear wheel drive electric engine Quite a heavy, quite a heavy car, but 600 horsepower, so super powerful. And um, we will see a lot of action in this competition. Interesting tournament format. Lewis Rubian comes again together with Chris Buxton. So uh, that's definitely something that you shouldn't miss. So go on racesroom.com/slash/competitions and check it out. Yeah, I'm very excited, but focusing again on today. After a, a, a crazy first race, maybe a little bit too much in a sense of contact for, for us here watching. It looked uh, pretty crazy to be a part of. Hopefully, though, the tempers, as much as they would have flared, hopefully things calm down for the second race and we get a good race under our belt. We'll have to wait and see. Qualification underway. A five-minute session, a closed circuit. Florian Haaser bails immediately, knew he overdid T1. Uh, it is a closed circuit, so it's just you, the track, the lap, and just focus on what you can do. So uh, we won't see uh, any time on the board until basically everyone's on the board, Rob. We'll ride on board with uh, championship leader, pole sitter, race winner here at Hockenheim, David Nodge. David Nodge has taken pole position in every single one of these uh, single qualifying sessions here. So of the second race qualifying, except one. So he's extremely strong in this format. I Remember think when Antonov was the other one in the first round at Nurburgring? Yes, yes, because Gianmarco Fiducci got the first pole, and then it was Kirill Antonov afterwards. After that, David Noj won all, has qualified on pole in all of them, including the time when we had the issue at Brands Hatch, and he did. We had two five-minute qualifying sessions, and he got pole in both of them. He absolutely loves this format. Always strong in it. Yeah, he's so comfortable with the track limits. You just see it here. Ooh. Entry motodrome always hard in the front wheel drive car. The car gets very unstable. But even then, you saw him catch that opposite lock. It was just a very quick whoop, and then straight back, just turning in, just calm as you like, straight to the apex. But even there, catch it a little bit. Straight Moritz. back on with it though. Moritz was faster in the first sector. We get the reports from our pit reporter, Ben Spunky, here in the chat. <laughs> Learner 47 1, nice time. Where does not slot in? Second. Eight thousandths behind. Very close between the two of them. But that is a great time to kick off the session from Moritz Lerner, who we know has struggled with track limits in qualifying previously. Emre Chihan, who, uh, like you said before, earlier in the, the week, took his first victory in race room competition, the DTM Championship, grabs pole here at the moment. In the early phases of this session, 47-1-2-0, great time. Here's Florian Haaser, who bailed from his lap very, very early, the first lap of the session. Escaped, no problem. He's still going to have enough time to do his second lap, you Florian Haaser fans. Overdoes the final corner, though, a predominant corner. 
that's going to cost him all of that time. He'll still run it towards the line. He's got plenty of time. Might as well finish it off and see what it does, just in case that second lap becomes illegal. Ninth is better than last, but only ninth for him. Yeah, big time loss there. Kalakov was purple in the first sector. But more importantly, both Notch and Lerner are also purple. We go back to David Notch. Look One tenth in the first time. sector. Let's check with Lerner. Oh, that's not, that's not quite good enough. That is a monster first sector from David Nagy. A tenth clear. You can tell he's done his first lap. He's thought, right, that was that was a good first sector. That was, yeah, that was a good lap. That was all right. That's got us on the board. Now let's push. Let's see what we can get. Absolutely threw it into T1. Oh, like you say, he's so comfortable with the track limits. Up massively in sector two. This could be a 46 in the uh, the shortened five minute session. Just two laps they can complete in this. This is a monster lap from David Noj. And Luna is not up anymore. Gian is in the pits. Yashel and Romanenko are both purple as well. But we have to stay with David Notch, with our championship leader. We said in the last race, he's got one hand on the trophy. Needs to still do well if he wants to win the championship here today. But this will really fire him into contention for that. To pole position with a 46.918 on that leaderboard there. Sorry, it's a 47.058 up there. Don't worry. Up to pole, though. Half a tenth clear of Emery Chihan. That is a crazy lap. Go go Valdi can beat him though. Yeah, Valdi could beat him. Ogoma second. Out of nowhere. Luna only Jack P4. Heathley. Jack Heathley down the order. Only seventh place for him with Tim Yarshall, who was bashing doors in the previous race. Florian Haas are only 10th, and I'm not sure what he's doing on this lap at the moment. Go, go, Baudis to the line. Is it going to be pole position? Yes, it is. Straight up there. There is your 46, a 992. That's a great lap. I don't think Florian Haas's lap counted. He's second. He's second. Oh, he did go up to second. I didn't have any timer for him. Moves up to second at the end. Wow, this is going to be a crazy, uh, a crazy final race here at Hockenheim. Yes, and we will go straight into the race after just a very, very small break. Go, go, Baudi, getting it done. Florian Haaser on the front row of the grid. It's race two here at Hockenheim. Oh, this could be a feisty affair. It certainly was in the previous race. And with another 25 minutes ahead of us, the Cooper Sim Racing Series ready to start the final race of the 11th round of the season. Hockenheim, the host. And that short run to turn one, we saw in the previous race, the car that started second did not have a good launch. That was Jack Keithley in that race. Florian Haaser, who started third in the previous one, had a great launch and took second place into T2. Is that going to happen this time? Or has Florian Haaser found something with the start that maybe could give him the lead into turn one? Gogo Baudi on pole position leads away from Florian Haaser. Oh, Florian Haaser's not had a great launch from second place and it has opened the door, but David Nosh to try and sweep around the outside, but it could be a slowdown if he's not careful. Oh, he was brave to try and hang around the outside, did not run too wide. And Florian Haaser is going to hold second place. David Nodge down to third. Tim Yarshall now trying to fight it out with the Hungarian. The champion be there's contact on the T2 apex curve as they all really slow down. And Gergo Baldi's run away. Great start once again for the men on pole. This time it's Gergo Baldi. David Nodge under pressure now. Under pressure by Tim Yarshall. from Nosh backwards to say Tim Yarshall. You've also got Moritz Lerner and Juan Manuel Gomez battling it out as well. Trying to go around the outside is David Nosh. Gomez makes contact there with Tim Yarshall. That's pushed Nosh out wide. That could be very close to a, a costly slowdown. I think he'll be all right. We'll get away now, no worries. But uh, David Nosh then, uh, he's actually down to fourth place. If we ride on board with Gomez, who is in third. 
Down the inside, though, I think this is going to work out a little bit for Kules. Further contact. Naj is going to gain the position. Moritz Lerner and Tim Yarshall very much a part of this. Tim Yarshall is going to get done. Whoa, all over the grass on the inside. He should be able to get Lerner here. I don't think he was going to quite get Juan Manuel Gomez. Dived it right over the curb. And I think that actually cost him time at the end of all of it. Further down the order, Henry Chihan battling it out with Adam Pinches as things remain feisty down to the bottom end of the top 10. Whoa, sweeping through. Moritz Lerner hangs on from Tim Yarjo. And Lerner has to try everything now. If he wants to keep this championship at least mathematically open, he must get past David Notch for sure. And I, I would think say he just wants to delay the crowning at the moment. I think Fiducci was a bit naughty in the hairpin there. Drove, uh, drove into the corner when there were already three cars and that pushed uh, Jihan wide, who lost a lot of places at the start. Yeah, Gianmarco Felici a little bit further down the order than, uh, than in the previous race, but he didn't qualify very well in the last one, just moved up through other people's mistakes and doing a few moves, maybe a little bit too aggressive there. Kirill Antonov down in 17th after finishing on the podium. Not what we'd have expected him. Well, certainly not. Luna versus Gomez, the timing might switch sometimes because Gomez is racing from Argentina, has a pretty high ping. I'm sure that'll catch us out at some point. Lerner going around the outside. Oh, he was giving it a good go. He's not going to make that one stick. I think he could get good drive out off the corner. But that, I'm pretty sure it was Harsin and Keith who got the slowdown penalty for running off there in the previous race. I wonder if that could give him a slowdown penalty in this one. Oh, it did. Maybe. Oh, I'm not sure. Got to be careful because with the slowdown penalties, you're not allowed to take them on the racing line. Benz Banky got a penalty for that in the previous one. We saw that through the uh, the S section. I think considering the gap that he's dropped off the back of uh, Juan Manuel Gomez, I think he definitely received something of a warning. Yeah, lost a lot of time there. I thought for uh, the glimpse, there's a splashing stop. He's moving up the order. He's doing very well here, up to 21st place, getting by Neg and Attiladina. Yeah, big battle it's behind him. And strong position nice for him. Oh, Neg! Oh, that's big contact. And Attiladina and uh, Vitfoot run wide through the penultimate one, still side by side behind. Sebastian Stoll in, uh, in sort of touching distance of Torelli into T1. It's not really a great move, though, but he's going to commit to it. Oh! <laughs> He thought, he very much thought about it. Whoa, big wide there from Neg in the background. Yeah, and slow down as well. I think for Sebastian Stahl here and for Tirelli, Dina's taking both of them. Ooh, gets a bit of a temp there. Try picking the cut back up very nicely. Whoa, flying through with Bitford. I think he's going to try and gain everyone in all of this. The mad race is not just for inside the top 10, it's for everywhere. Happen there in the foreground. Oh, Ponto gets spun. And superb recovery from, well, not recovery, but avoidance from Ponto. Driving his car backwards all of the way. I think that was Frigotu who spun him there. Yeah, it was uh, very messy. I tried doing three wide, and someone very much overdid it in all of that. And there's further moving as Romanenko gets down the inside. Uh, nice cutback though from Frigotu. Who give him credit for that? That was, that was some nice work. Then pitches on the apex in the next corner. David Nodge. Oh, here we go. David Moyes versus Moritz Lerner. Lerner is moving towards the front. He is marching up there. And these two, very distant in the previous race. But uh, if you want to delay that crowning, then maybe getting by David Noyes is the best way of doing it. it certainly has to work for it now. Gomez, though, two seconds off the back of Florian Haas here. He's right in touching distance of uh, Gogo Baudi. I think there could be something into the hairpin if Florian Haas uh, so wishes to attempt. I'm sure Gogo Baudi will defend smartly, though. We saw him defending most of the race, uh, most of the second half of the race, rather, from Moritz Lerner last time. Tim Yarshall, slow down penalty, dropping down. Drops behind Martin Barner from six to eight. He goes. That was very curious from Florian Haas. So he pulled all the way over to the left-hand side, almost like getting out of the slipstream. 
of Gergo Balbian. It's very interesting. Here's the battle for the podium, though. Down the inside. Oh, I think he's going to really commit to it. David Nage on Juan Manuel Gomez opens the door himself, trying to push him through as there's big contact in the background. That's Tim Yarshall, was it, who was spinning? Certainly is. It's in the middle of the pack. I think there was even further contact with the likes of Galakov coming through. And I think Gian or Brecht himself there and spun him. Yeah. I think so too, or something in that vein. Anyway, I'm not sure if it was Emery Chihan or not. I didn't quite catch it, but uh, either way, he's been uh, escorted round, shall we say? Nodge onto the podium then. Yeah, I uh, just calculated before before this race, Nodge was gaining 77 points on uh, on Moritz Luna. He's sitting on 132 points. So currently he's in P3. P3 should give him 82 points. And that would mean he's over the 206 points that he needs, and he's over the 40-point gap that he needs. So that would mean, if the results stay as they are, David Notch is our Cupra Sim Racing Series 2020 champion. A very big moment for his career. And to be fair, that just, as much as there isn't that much pressure in the next two rounds, because like realistically, it seems fairly comfortable for him. You know, like he's got the drop scores, he's got enough to fall back on. Like it seems fairly comfortable in certain scenarios. Obviously, you know, touch wood, you never know. At the same time, though, it just relieves all pressure. You can focus on having fun at Spa, fun at Macau. <laughs> you know, so that's a stressful race anyway. I think he just wants to tick it off and get it done. And getting it ticked off as well, effectively, before the drop scores you know, properly come in. Like amazing, amazing stuff. David Nash. And they're still battling behind this. We're on board with Baldi looking back for our race leader. There is the move. Gomez trying to go around outside over does it though. Moritz Lerner's going to swoop on through, but David Nash. Oh, just about picking his way through, just Moritz Lerner. I thought Nash was going to try and give the slipstream to Juan Manuel Gomez and maybe try and force them side by side. But Moritz Lerner up to fourth place, now going to go around the outside of the arena section, as we've seen him try and do a few times. He is committed to it. That's nice work. He's got the inside for the right hand. This is what made the move stick on Adam Pinchos in the previous race. But how much uh, is David Nodge going to hold firm around the outside? Nicely done, but the momentum seems to be going the way of Moritz Lerner. And I think it certainly is podium to Moritz Lerner. Nice move. He loves going around the outside of the arena section. Great pass. Oh, and Gomez. Really fired that one, did uh, the game. I don't think he really intended to, but uh, he's got Gianmarco Feducci in sixth. Again, moving his way up the order, the uh, the Italian, and if things go his way this race, he could be looking at a second podium. Of course, a, a long way to go to the checkered flag, a further 16 minutes nearly. Ooh, I think Gomez ran a little bit wide. Oh, we've got two red cards battling out in the background. That's Sultan Suti and Emery Chihan to T2 and uh, that's Suti that we're looking at now around the outside of the second corner nice work on the inside for the next but the momentum should go the way of uh, of Emery Chihan and it'll be the inside of the hairpin as well once we get down there around the parabolic that we go momentum seems fairly equal Side of Lerner, there's contact on the apex of the corner. That's going to cost Nodge a few places. Oh, with, with, this, with this result, he's not going to win the championship. No, he doesn't he score enough points. He needs to be fourth, and he also needs to keep the gap to uh, to Moritz Lerner. Yeah. P7, not good enough. Oh, and there's contact with Keithley as well. That won't help. Yeah, he's lost position to that to Lerner, to Gomez, to Gianmarco Feducci, and to Martin Barner as well, and very nearly Jack Keithley in all of that. And yeah, you're quite right. The thing is, did he really need to take that risk, or maybe is he just trying to have a bit of fun? Maybe like, oh, I'll just get the podium. Why not? Oh, I don't think I don't think he's having fun here. I think he's massively no. under pressure. They were really nervous before the race, the whole Mira team. A bit more nervous than they maybe should be, considering the championship standings. Because there's still two rounds left, of course, where Notch can easily get the points. But in this race, an uncharacteristic mistake. Well, after this race, when you take into account the drop scores, effectively, to keep the championship going, the pressure is entirely on Moritz Lerner, not David Notch. 
realistically. Like to keep that going is because David Nosh has done so well through the season over the opening 11 rounds. Sebastian Stahl then battling it out with Gustavo Fregato. It was, you know, fairly uh, feisty interaction. Here's Jack Keithley on the back of uh, David Noj with fellow Hungarian Martin Barner ahead. You have to ask the question, was the move worth it? If he's feeling that kind of pressure, was that move worth it? And I think the solid answer that we would all answer that to is absolutely not. If you're trying to have a bit of fun, then, then go for it. You know, yeah. really but he didn't have to pass Luna at all. No. Obviously, in this scenario that you've calculated it, I don't think I don't think he knows that. Yeah. There he goes. He gets the move done on Martin Barnett. Maybe uh, Adam Pinches needs to take a look at, at David Nash's line through the hair because it actually worked this time, whereas Adam tried all race last time to get through, never was able to. They've got a few more steps to take, though, for, uh, for David Nash. Got to get by Fiducci, got to get by Gomez if he wants to win the championship in this race. Before we move to Spa, before we move to Macau, he can do it here today. As you see, he needs to score at least 206 points, which for that, he needs to finish fourth place in this race, considering the points he's already scored through the round. He needs to be fourth place. And then he'll have it done. He's already outscoring Moritz Lerner in that sense if he gets there by enough. Still a fair amount of pressure. Yeah. Luna also under pressure by Gomez. Gomez is having quite enough. a good race. Quite a good round, I would say. Yeah. Very much so. Especially in this race, he's very much contending on pace. Although we've seen some good pace out of uh, Omar Gomez before. So, you know, it's not to be too surprising. He was the fastest, uh, realistically, the fastest driver at Dubai. Uh, Top the pre-qualifier going into it. So he's had, he's had pace this season. Maybe not put it all together too often. Still looking for his uh, first victory as well as Fiducci. He's looking on the inside. Oh, and in the background, oh. that's Keithley, isn't it? Oh, that's massively oh! overdone. That's hugely overdone. That's Martin Barnum massively overdone to Gianmarco Fiducci. To David Noyes is going to nearly rejoin straight into the racing line. The championship is potentially going to have to wait until Spa. That was a massive overdoing. I think it was purely on Martin Barnum. I don't think there was any contact. I think it the angle that I saw. I don't think it was anything between um, Keithley and Barna prior to that. Barna seemed to overdo the corner. Huge contact, a but huge price paid for David Nodge. I think it was Keithley though who hit Notch. I think Barna cleaned up the car oh. ahead of him. He cleaned up Fiducci. That may well have been the case, I. It may have been the other way around. Fiducci, oh, what bad luck for him. P15 only. Horrible luck. Brown was going so well for him, podium in the last race, now only 15. Horrible, horrible luck. But yeah, like we said, that, that championship, I think for Nodge, with that in mind, with only 10 and a half minutes to go in the race, I think that is that one done, uh, at least for now. Gomez on the podium at the moment with Lerner ahead, uh, Lerner behind, and uh, plenty of pressure, so rolls reversed. You can still see in the background, Barna is hanging on to fifth place. He's got Adam Pinchers directly behind. For, so for AAA, it's, uh, it's looking like a decent race. Their first uh, driver's teammates. Last race, they were battling all race long. This race seemed fairly, fairly apart, but Barna's really come to the fore in the Cooper Sim Racing Series with consistency. It's unbelievable that, that Barna and Keithley in this race are taking that much risk with the championship uh, at stake, with the strike system in play as well. Could hurt especially Keithley. David Notch now. Well, actually, it's not so bad for him because he's still got the next two rounds here, but that's pretty much his chances of winning the championship right here. Over. Yeah, he'll have to wait, at least for now. All battle for the race lead. I think Florian Haas is getting a decent undercut here on Gergo Baudi and he's got the inside into the fast right hander into the stadium section towards the sax curve Gergo Baudi should be able to hang on with the momentum around the outside certainly does so but Florian Haaser he is here he is looking for a race victory around the outside of the sax curve maybe hooks it up back down to the second apex nicely done 
but Gergo Baldi hanging on in the black and white car, blue and white, for the Euronics Gaming driver of Florian Haas. So Mirror Esports currently leading the race. Florian Haas, is, he, you know he's desperate for this victory. He can feel it. He looked so quick coming into this round. Had a terrible first race through no fault of his own realistically. But this is the one. Gogo Baldi, in mind, also wants a race victory. He was denied last round um, by a, a race on battle with Moritz Lerner and then Benz Banker came out of nowhere for them and take, took the lead, took the victory. Yeah, I don't think ba uh, Baldi has won a race this season either, right? No, he's not. The only race win that he's got in the Cooper Sim Racing Series was Monza 2019. A long time between, uh, between victories for the Hungarian. But Florian Haase, not one at all. And down the inside he goes into the hairpin. Is this the move? Nicely spotted from Gogo Baldi. He didn't really fight it too hard. Could have fought it a little bit harder, but I don't think he's too worried about it. Eight minutes to the clock. Plenty of opportunities to go for a move. And more than enough time behind. Three and a half seconds to the car behind. And that's how clean you can do it in the hairpin. The hairpin's a dangerous spot. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. But drivers do need to be very aware of that. And we've seen it a few times today where some drivers have just overdone it a little bit too much. And as we said, the stewards are going to have a few things to look at. Here's Galakov battling with Emery Chihan way over the curve. That'll be a, uh, a slowdown penalty for sure. Is Gianmarco Baducci maybe with a little bit of red mist on the back of Tim Yarshall trying to move his way up the order. Is Galakov, has, has he got a start? Oh, there's contact with Tim Yarshall comes back across and Gianmarco Viducci's also got the position done. This is very, very messy in the back. Emery, uh, uh, Tim Yarshaw and Adam Pinchez now. Pinchez going around the outside of Galakov, not really able to do so as he runs wide at the penultimate corner. And Tim Yarshaw to the apex is going to hang on to uh, what will be 13th place. Galakov, uh, a bit further up the order than we, we're, we're normally used to seeing him. Um, doing uh, fairly well, but like I said, maybe a little bit too, uh, bit too messy in the mid-pack there. This could be interesting as well. Suti, Keithley, and David March. Hanging on for now is Keithley and uh, Zoltan Suti ahead, of course. Suti, Mirror Esports teammate of uh, of David Nosh. 1.6 seconds off of Kirill Antonov, who's uh, well up the road and just by himself at the moment. Defending down the inside, Florian Hasa. There goes the late apex again from, uh, from Gergo Baldi, but... Not quite yet. Okay, here we go. All the way around the outside. David Nodge on uh, Jack Keithley. Keithley's going to be through. Oh, drives him off the road. Don't like that. Not a fan. That was uh, Nodge trying to go around the outside. And, yeah, fair enough. Well, it was, was Keithley's, but I'm sure Nodge will have a few things to say about that. Zoltan Suti trying to help his teammate here. Here goes Emery Chihan down the inside of uh, Gianmarco Verducci as well. And that'll be the move to uh, Chihan at least for now. Verducci holding firm on the inside of the next corner though. Oh, three oh, wide. Oh no. No, no, no. Don't fancy How that did that work? <laughs> but I didn't gain in the position. It's going to end up losing him. So in the, in the short term, it didn't. Uh, in the long term, I don't know how they didn't crash. No, I have no idea, Rob. <laughs> Crazy stuff here. Uh, this is why I don't race steering cars very much anymore. <laughs> it's so stressful as a driver. They really are swapping paint. Yeah, that's really battles throughout the field. These are Ponto, Neck and Gunai. Battle for P23. Still behind Sebastian Stahl, who's having yeah, a great race say, here. Stahl is doing great stuff. Oh, Ponto has a slowdown, I think. But we have to go back to the leaders. Less than five minutes to go, and Gergo Baldi... He's not out of reach. Uh, there'll be three laps to go. Is it going to come down to the final lap of the race? As we saw back in Suzuka. You can see the battle for the podium also very, very close. Here comes uh, Gogo Baldi. Round the outside. Not going to try and hook it up, but he's going to go again for a good drive off the corner. We've not seen that work at all. Maybe he's just trying to sort of let Florian be like a little bit safe. And we'll try and pounce a little bit later. Though he's not sensing that today, that, that right now is his opportunity. And he just, desperately wants to get that victory. Just been informed, yet. of course, that 
that there are some points that Notch also gains that we haven't quite had on our list here. These are the points from the leaderboard session. Aye. And there he gained 49. So, looking at Notch's position now, could be enough after all if the gap between him and Lerner is over 40 points. Well, obviously, he would have finished ahead in the leaderboard from, from Lerner. I don't know where Lerner finished in the leaderboard. But obviously, he's getting 49. That's one off of there. So that's second place. Something where we have to calculate after this race for sure. Yeah, we'll get, uh, the, we'll, get the correct we'll bring uh, the details. <laughs> yeah, get the correct info here. We'll focus on this battle, at least for now. The battle for the race victory. Neither of these drivers winners in uh, in the 2020 Keeper Sim Racing Series. One of them has won in the Keeper Sim Racing Series before. Behind that, battle for the podium, Homo Gomez and uh, Moritz Lerner. Behind this, we've got Martin Barner and Kirill Antonov, who are also closing in the battle for fifth place. Jack Keith, the ahead of Zoltan Suti, David Nodge and Gianmarco Viducci, your top ten. And uh, that battle further down is very, very feisty. So we'll keep on this. They're all doing one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which seems to be ideal at Hockenheim. Here we go. Massively defensive there with Florian Haas. moves back across towards the racing line just to cover off the apex and maybe give himself a good run through the corner. Perfectly fine to do so. Moritz Lerner's grabbed the podium place, though. Moritz Lerner down the inside, but he's got uh, to fight it all the way around the outside through the fast kick on the inside of the arena section. If he can hold it all the way through, the podium trying to go for Moritz Lerner. Juan Manuel Gomez around the outside. Heavy on the brakes, though, from Moritz Lerner to the apex. Overdid it slightly. Gomez around the uh, down with the undercut and around the outside. Nicely done from the Argentinian driver. That was very nice. Great move, and it's still not over yet. Same at the front. Hasse has to defend now in the motorhome section. Max go over here. And there will be one more lap after this. One more lap for Florian Haas to hang on to a uh, a much awaited victory. Same with Gogo Baudi. We saw a last lap move at Suzuka. It was in T1. Mind. Uh, Banky moving up two places in uh, one corner. Are we going to see the same thing across this lap? David Nodge up into eighth place, passing his teammate Zoltan Suti. The Mirror Esports team keeping their eye on him. It could be a potential victory in the championship. For David Nosh, we'll have to do the points after. Well, after, don't worry, don't panic. But, but that may may have to wait for us to keep our eye on it with everything chopping and changing here in the Cooper Sim Racing Series. But for David Nosh, today could be the day. We'll have to wait and see. Focus to the race lead and Florian Haaser. He's built himself a good gap through the first few corners. And the hairpin is going to take quite a lunge from Gergo Baudi if he's able to do anything here. I don't think he's... Oh, he's looking, he's diving, he's diving. Florian Haas is waiting patiently. Oh, hats off. That was so patient from Florian Haas. And Moritz Lerner is going to get onto the podium, at least for now. He's going to have to defend a little bit. Kirill Antonov's been packing with Martin Barner. I'm sure there's been something between the two of those. But Florian Haas, hats off to him. What a move. Back down the inside, just waited. Saw Baldi coming, knew he was overdoing the corner. I just did the undercut. Yeah. What a move. Just calculated the championship standings back. Should be enough for Notch, but because of the penalties, because of the report system, it will be too soon to call him a champion here. Absolutely. Wow. Gomez is close enough for a podium. He's only got a couple more opportunities to do so. I think he's a little bit too far off the back of Moritz Lerner. But at the front, it has been a long time coming in the Cooper Sim Racing Series 2020. Finally in the Keep Pushing Racing Series, coming through the final corner, Euronix Gaming's Florian Haaser is going to take a very well-deserved victory. He has been the pace man all day, and with a terrible race one that did not go his way at all, he takes victory. Further down the order, we watch David Nodge come across the line ahead of Gianmarco Peducci, and it could very well be a champion's drive from David Nodge. We'll have to wait till the calculations afterwards. We'll have to wait until the stewards have been through everything. But it could very well be that today is the day. Sebastian Stahl going to come across the line with a very feisty battle behind to take 22nd in the guest drive. Rob Haaser finally ahead of Baldi, ahead of Lerner. Great final lap from Haaser. 
calculated to perfection and that's the drive that we expect to see from the German. Yeah, brilliant drive from Florian Hassan. Finally it worked out for him so late in the season. Congratulations, Gergo Baldi also. Strong result once again. And Lerner does the most out of it in the end with the podium here. But I think it's not going to be enough. David Notch, provisionally, he's got the championship secure. But because it's so close, one penalty could, uh, could take it away from him. So we can't really say it right now that he is the champion or not. Have to wait a little bit longer, but we still got two more races left. Yeah, very unofficial. We'll uh, we'll call that one the uh, the championship to the way of David Noyes. But like you say, there is two rounds to go in the Cooper Sim Racing Series. We've got to go to Spa, the final endurance race of the season, before we finish up the season in Macau. There's the calendar. It's been a long season, uh, Rob. We've done eleven rounds. It's been mad. It's been quite a thrill ride. In a week's time, though, we head to Spa, an endurance round which last season was truly incredible before we finish off the season 31st of October. Until then, though, we'll have to wait and see. We'll be back with you at Spa. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.